Hello there and welcome to the series of videos looking to go through the content of Maths A-Level in the lower sixth. Here we're looking at solving quadratic equations so you can answer exercise 2A and 2B. So let's get started then. So before we get started what I'd like you to consider is if you've got two letters and they multiply together and they make a zero, what necessarily has to be true about either of these two letters? And the answer here is that, well, one of them must have equaled zero, because the only way you can get, the only way you can get a multiplication making an answer of zero is if one of these initial values, a or b, was equal to zero itself. So this is the idea that we're going to approach solving quadratic equations with. So for example, we first have x squared equals 9x. Now the first thing we need to do is make a 0 on one side. So subtract 9x from the other one side. Then factorise. We're going to be doing a lot of factorising in this video, so make sure You've either seen the factorising video from before or you're familiar with factorising. In this case here we go through a two point checklist. First thing on that checklist is common factors. In this case we have a common factor of x. Now we're back at this scenario here. Effectively this x at the front here is our capital A and this x minus 9 here is our capital B. If these two expressions have multiplied to make a zero then one of these expressions must have been 0 itself. So either x equals 0 or x minus 9 equals 0, and in which case x equals 9 itself. So here we've solved the equation. We've got two answers here. and Generally, not always, but generally we get two answers when we solve quadratic equations. x equals 0 and x equals 9. OK, so we're doing roughly the same thing for another example here. First step on our factorising um, checklist is common factors. No common factors here. Now we try two brackets. Multiplying to make minus 15 and adding to make minus 2. We need 3 and minus 5. So now we've got two brackets. We've effectively got A and B here that times together to make 0. So either one of these brackets must have equaled 0. So either x plus 3 equals 0, in which case x is minus 3, or x minus 5 is equal to 0, in which case x equals 5. So these are the two answers to this question here. x equals minus 3 and x equals 5. OK, another one. Let's try 2x squared minus 9x minus 5 equals 0. Luckily, with part B and part C here, we've got a 0 on one side. Otherwise, we'd need to make it 0 on one side. Now, remember with these uh, factorising quadratics here, remember we need to choose a number that would times together to make minus 5. But then remember, when we put them into two brackets, we need one of them to be doubled to make the minus 9x. So we need a number here and a number here times to make this expression here and add to make this expression here but remember this term here is going to be expanded with a 2x so it needs to be doubled when we make the minus 9x. In this case here we need to think about our pairs of numbers so our pairs of numbers here are going to be 2x plus 1 and x minus 5. And notice here how the 2x would times by the minus 5 to make minus 10, and then we add on the 1 to make it out up to minus 9. So here we've got the exact same thing going on. We've got a capital A and a capital B, and they times together to make a 0. So in this case, either 2x plus 1 equals 0, in which case x is equal to minus a half, or x equals 5. OK, slightly harder now. We've got 6x squared here now. So either when we factorise, we're going to have a 3x and a 2x in our bracket, 
or we're going to have a 6x and an x. So it's, it's a lot of trial and error. So go through this. Um, so let's try a 3x and a 2x inside here. And we'll try 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 5. Notice here how when we expand, we're going to get minus 2x and 15, which is going to make us a minus 13x. And the minus 1 times the 5 is minus 5. So in this case here, either 3x minus 1 equals 0, in which case x is a third, or 2x plus 5 equals 0, in which case x is minus 5 over 2. Okay, now this is a classic example where we're going to have to force it into equaling 0 on one side. So what we need is to subtract, or if it was a negative, add these components onto the left-hand side. Now we're going to factorise it. So in this case here, it's going to be x minus 4 and x minus 4. And in this case, we only get one solution because we've got the same bracket appearing twice. So x equals 4 is our answer. OK, what about examples like this? Well, in this case, we can approach the question slightly differently. If a squared equals 16, then we know that a is either equal to 4, or it could have potentially have also been minus 4, because minus 4 squared gives us a 16. So in this case here, we're going to do this in a very similar way. Either, think of the capital A as our 2x minus 3, either 2x minus 3 equals 5, or it equals minus 5, so plus or minus 5. So in the first case, when our bracket equals 5, we get x equals 4, and in the case where our bracket equals the negative solution, we get x is minus 1. So in the very rare cases where you get an equation that looks like this, you can do it this way if you want to. You could have also have expanded this double bracket out and taken away 25. You would have got exactly the same answer. Do exactly the same thing here, but we're going to need a square root on this 7 here. So either the thing inside the brackets either equals plus or minus the square root of 7. So then adding on... 3 to both sides, we're going to get 3 plus root 7 or 3 minus root 7. So the two answers are the same here. No, the answers aren't the same, but we've got two answers here. Okay, the quadratic formula. We've also got a quadratic formula that helps us solve these types of quadratic equations as well. Now we have to be familiar with what the letters mean in each of the places in the formula. The A letter here refers to the number that goes at the front of x squared. So A appears in the formula in the 4AC here and on the 2A on the bottom here. The B part is this number here that appears in front of the x. Now, do take into account that you need the positive or negative of it if it is either positive or negative. So the b here is going to appear here and here. And the b value in this case is minus 3. And the c here is the coefficient that's on the end on its own without any x's attached to it. And that goes in one place in the formula. So you can apply the quadratic formula and it can work out answers for you as well. Hopefully you've seen this from GCSE. If not, please go and ask your teacher because this is a big part of A-level maths. However, this is just a little summary of it. You need A, B and C. Plug them into your formulas correctly. Now, I would never have written this here, minus 3 squared like this. The minus 3 needs brackets around it before it is squared. Otherwise, in your formula, in your calculator, it's going to interpret this as 3 squared and then negative of it. Negative 3 needs to be squared to make a whole value of 9. Okay. All right, then. So have a go at these two questions here and see how you get on.
Okay, well done for having a go at these two questions here. The first one, I believe I can spot some factorization here. X plus 2, X plus 1. So in this case, we've got our capital A and our capital B. So in each case, X plus 2 either equals 0 or X plus 1 equals 0. So we get our two answers here of X equals minus 2 or x equals minus 1. In the second question here, I can't spot any way that I can factorise this. So I'm going to have to resort to my quadratic formula. a in this case equals 1, b in this case equals 3, and c in this case equals 1. So using the quadratic formula, it goes minus b, that's 3, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, that's 9, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is also 1, divided by 2 times 1. And this is our value for x. Now notice here you get a plus or a minus. Now from this plus or minus, you're going to get two solutions. One of your solutions is going to come from the positive and one of your solutions is going to come from the negative. So our answer here is going to be minus 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. So one solution here is going to be x equals minus 3 plus root 5 over 2. And the second solution here is going to be minus 3 minus root 5 over 2. I'll quickly show you how you can actually cheat this way through on the calculator. On your calculator, press the menu button and scroll down to option A. Then select the polynomial mode, option number 2. They need to then know how, how many degrees your polynomial has. In this case, it's a quadratic, so it has two degrees. So select option number 2 by pressing 2. For the first one, enter your coefficients in the boxes that they give you and press enter. You'll get your first solution as 1 and again your next solution is going to be minus 2. In the case of the second question here, enter your coefficients into the quadratic formula solver and you're going to get minus 3 plus 5 over 2 and minus 3 minus root 5 over 2. Now you can work out the algebraic val the numeric values of these by just putting it back into your normal calculator mode. All right then, so make sure you have a go at plenty of questions from exercise 2a and 2b if this is new to you. This is going to be a familiar type of question throughout the whole of A-level maths, and you need to be confident when you see any type of quadratic equation and how you're going to be quickly able to solve it. Okay, thanks for watching.